Boom. Hello, guys. How you doing? All right. Anyone recognize that track that I just pl uh, just played there? No prizes, no money if you get the right answer. Um, let's say a quick hello to Blake. Quick hello to Philip Carey. How you doing, guys? <clears throat> what have you been up to? I've got a terrible cough at the moment, so you have to forgive me if I mute, mute myself every now and then. Uh, Epic Adam, see you in a minute. Andy GSA Tractor, how you doing, mate? Have you got that GSA out the garage again yet? You back out riding? Paul Clark. We also have David Hawkins. Hi, Dave. Or Mr. Dave, as he's otherwise known. Jim Sadler, Old School Motorcycles Limited. Phil Green, hello, Phil. Um, Phil, have you bought a BSA? Or am I reading into it a bit too much? I saw one of your socials today, so I thought you might have bought one, but who knows? Ken Brooks, hello. Looking good, ER. Really? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> right. So tonight we have the mighty Flat Cap Racer. Who's texting me? Flat Cap Racer, uh, who's a US based uh, vlogger and uh, got a great history of bikes. And uh, he's quite a cool dude. He's, he really is. He's got some, you know, got some nice bikes to show you tonight. So. Heath, hello. How you doing, mate? On the road. Chris Tucker, hello, sir. How you doing? And, uh, yeah, so we've got the rest of the lads to bring in as well. Um, who is Saddlebag73, Western Super Motor Vlog, New Biker, and Epic Adam. How you doing, guys? Yeah, good. Thank you. Good evening. Good hello. evening. What have you all been up to? <coughs> Not a lot. Same old stuff another week, isn't it? Yeah, very well. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just shove you around. I'm a bit tired. Later. I need a weekend. I I did a weekend to re recover from my weekend. Same. Well, what, where have you been? Been on your travels again? No, I've been really? um, I've, I've been doing some training, and uh, today I've been sorting out some electrics on the Himalayan. Oh dear. Right. What's yes. happened there then? Or do you rather not say? Um, uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but when uh i bought the v system camera system and i asked my local dealer to install that they basically patched it in i have no idea why but they patched it in to the cable for the battery tender the knock cable they basically spliced it and cut the the spade connectors from the v system camera spliced it in with the knock and from that point onwards uh, it was very intermittent where the camera system was working, and and then the the, the battery tender also stopped working. So I got a new battery tender table, um, battery tender cable. On the, I got a new V system power adapter. I remove all the old crap and I put the new one in. Yeah, I do in remember that. In the last that. two hours. Oh, well done. And it's still gone well, is it? You started it up and no fires. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, now, Phil, how are you doing? Oh, hello, well, what have you got? No fun on some of this. Right, what is it? Beer? Whiskey. <laughs> yeah. It's the best. Bitter. Ah, green screen. Green screen doesn't like this. It's a... Oh, yeah, you'll need it We're after your... Uh... From... from Suffolk. Let's go. Suffolk, so from the East Country. <laughs> From the East Country. You guys should try this. It's very good. Oh, nice. I don't know if you have beer in the West Country, but there's very good beer in the East Country. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. right. Fair enough. Cool. I'm on the uh, Invisible Thatcher's Haze again, so uh, that's my lot for today. Um, Phil, how are you getting on, mate? Thanks for coming in again. Missed you on the last one, didn't we? Um, your yeah. video's doing really well, isn't it, that you pulled out today? Was it today? Yeah, it was today. Yeah, yes, yesterday it came out. It surprised me, actually. It's done really, really well. Um, I think it's one of those things where if you put a title of a, or the, the name of a motorcycle in, or a make of a motorcycle and brand of a motorcycle into the title, it seems to pull in a lot of people that are searching for bike videos for that particular one. And it it's, it's seemed to work really well. I mean, that, that video was predominantly about the Firestorm. Um and it, it's gone down really well, really well. Yeah. Not so sure about, uh, very mixed about whether I should get rid of it or not. And that's just me, let alone the comments. But 
<coughs> but I was just thinking how wonderful Adam's self-portrait is that he's done just behind him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I tried having a bit of a different background today. Um, <laughs> That's well. Devon's green screens. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. That normally goes on your bedroom wall, does it, Adam? Uh, oh, it's uh, it was in my, my living room, actually. It was uh, bedroom right. ceiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, never, I put it in my son's room, but it scared him, so... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Um, guys, a lot of you have been putting out some non-motorcycle um, related vids at the moment. I was just thinking of Hippo Drones, actually. He's had a few people unsubscribe because he's been doing his RC car stuff. Shame, isn't it, that they don't just skip a video and then uh, move on to the RC car, you know, move on to the motorbike yeah. stuff when it comes back mm. again. But it's weird, isn't it? But have, yeah. you, have you guys found your walking vids, uh, Saddle? Have you got much from that or has it been... Bit of a no, I, I haven't lost anything either. So I think it's good. You're sorting out the. Your sounds in the night, neighbor. Crap. That's all right. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, I've said the saddlebags in the comments before. I think if he could run a secondary channel to the side of it, because actually that, well, both videos he's done, but the first one he did, which was sort of walking through. Um, it seemed like a, a an early morning ramble through the. Uh, the local uh, area, it was brilliant and it was so yeah. easy to watch. And I think if you could run a secondary channel alongside the saddlebags, and like I said to you, I, I think it could be called Rucksack 73. Yeah, um, that would be. <laughs> but, uh, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. I enjoy it. I like breaking it up. I tune in for the people as much as I do tuning in for the bikes. That's, that's yeah. the fact of it. And um, Saddle's walking video, I really enjoyed it. It's just easy watch, isn't it? It's nice yeah. looking at yeah, nice I views and a nice sunny day. Uh, I'm normally laid in bed when I'm watching these videos because it's yeah, you know, early-ish for me in the morning. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it. Um, who else has done a video? Noob, you've done one uh, for your tram ride in Lisbon mm. as well, haven't you? Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I did a couple when I went to the Lisbon. One from visiting this uh, uh, upper, uh, like clothes shop uh associated with a custom bike uh shop that they have there and another one when we took one of the electric cars uh sort of going up to through the old town uh with uh mm. with sort of with my daughter sitting down and enjoying the sights and uh some of the scenery and the really narrow streets uh yeah yeah i i, I kind of had fun doing that it's nice it's nice to do something different for us doesn't it I, that's what i find yeah Adam, um, yeah, how's your uh, video done? You put one out tonight, didn't you? Um, yeah, I think it's doing, it's doing pretty, pretty well, I think. Yeah. Last time I checked, it was ranked second, I think. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. It's only been out for a few hours, so yeah, yeah. it's got plenty of time, hasn't it? But yeah, it's doing all right. So, uh, uh, hi to Cornish Motorcycle Diaries. Uh, the flesh this, flesh this week and the green screen looks good. Thank you very much. Uh, the flesh looks good. Okay. Um <laughs> Hey up, Matt Lock. Hey up, Phil, and all the rest of it. Right. A couple of things I want to say. Uh, first of all, um, sinners who have been quite good to me over the years looking after bikes and uh, stuff like that. Um, they are now offering a seven-year warranty. That's something I just wanted to let everybody know on their bikes. It is first year parts and labor, and then uh, for the next six years, it's parts only. But at least it's something. Um so that's good. That's um, good. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Uh, BSA bikes have fully landed now. Those 350 that I mentioned back in January that were, you know, go, coming across to us are now here. They're being distributed. And for, from what I can see, I think most of them are going to sell um, really quickly. Uh, I went down to my local dealer recently and there was four or five out there which had just been sold. So um, it's good to know that they are fulfilling their promises after a bit of a slow start, wasn't it? But it seems to be happening. So that's good. Yeah, I uh, had an email from uh, from Corkchester Kawasaki, which is also a Royal Enfield dealer, saying the BSAs are now in stock. Yeah. How many have they got, Nate? Do you know? Have, have you actually been there? Or? Uh, I haven't been there for a while. I haven't actually read the email. I just saw that it had arrived, and I saw the subject. That was it. <laughs> so... yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, oh, hello. What's Phil saying here? This is interesting. A few issues today, though, on the BSA. Has Phil Green got a um, BSA, guys? Does anyone know? Has he bought one? Phil, no. can you let us know? 
he was talking about getting one. I haven't seen anything recently. I haven't, no. But I saw something on his socials with a picture of a BSA. So right. I'm wondering whether he actually has bought one. So we'll keep an eye on the, the comments. Um, not yet. Right, okay. When you say uh, issues, Phil, what, what do you mean? Uh, let us uh, know uh, what that is. Um, Cornish Motorcycle Diaries has been to Thor Motorcycles. And he had quite a few in. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. It looks like all the all the you know dealers are starting to stock the uh, bikes now. Right, let's bring in our special guest now, shall we? We're Yay! Time, isn't it? Let me get rid of that comment, and we will bring in the dude, which is Flat Cap Racer. You just get right. uglier. <laughs> no, no, not not compared to this lot. You look fine. <laughs> oh, I love it when you lie to me like that. <laughs> well, you're a special guest. You get special treatment, don't you? <laughs> um, Flat Cap, you are based in Idaho. Is that correct? That's correct. I've been up here for about the last eight years. Excellent. And uh, where were you before that then? I've... I was in the military. Uh, I retired. I was in Tucson, Arizona for until I retired out of the military, then did some work around there for a while. If you watch that yeah. long, very long video of mine, it tells you how long and what I did there, but, uh, it was a rocket scientist. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> but you know what? I found out that you don't have to be the smart rocket scientist. That's all you have to do is be able to make decisions because they don't want to make decisions. <laughs> right. <laughs> they, they pay me to take the information they knew and say, let's go ahead with it. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what though, that video was brilliant that you done because it's yeah. very difficult to keep me watching a video for over 20 minutes and that video was brilliant it, it was engaging all the way through your bike history your uh work history as well you know because that's fascinating what you used to do for a, a job yeah um, which i guess you can't say too much about can you can you i don't know <laughs> i don't know we we talk about it a lot that that's not it the the missile parts and the nuclear parts that's that's kind of i don't know it it, it got me uh like I said, I'm not a big fan of nuclear weapons, so I was I was in them for a long time, and I saw so much that it just scared the crap out of me. Yeah, I was doing it. Yeah, so. I bet. Yeah, and I, I expect when you were doing that job, there was a lot going on anyway, wasn't there? At one point. Oh, there was a lot of stuff. Uh, one of the things that if you guys ever, if you ever do uh, Google Able Archer, it was a. Uh, uh, exercise that happened and it's a big worldwide exercise we have with nato in 1983 and uh, the russians I actually thought that was real yeah they thought that was re i was down in the launch control center then and um it was in in reagan was the president and everybody was scared of reagan right it turns out we shouldn't have been as scared of reagan as the person they during these exercises sometimes what they'll do is they'll put uh another person in charge in the cabinet they'll say that the president's gone now you're the president you make the decision right so they picked the uh secretary of agriculture huh. and this exercise is supposed to go on for a while you know they're invading soviets invading uh, uh europe and somebody launches a nuclear weapon so the response is generally is they launch one at you you launch one back at them right so in the exercise we thought was going to go on for several days hi bandit man uh and uh but what happened was the secretary of agriculture decided she's going to launch everything so the exercise was over in like 10 minutes instead of three days yeah <laughs> I, wow. I, I was never going to vote for that woman <laughs> the, 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 the scary thing is right I mean, I, I grew up through the 80s and all through the 80s, a lot of pop uh -huh. culture was around, uh, influenced by the Cold War and influenced by the threat of nuclear war. <laughs> so a lot of the music, a lot of the films like war games, uh, the right. day after, all that stuff was to do with the imminent threat right. of nuclear war. And everybody thinks that that's going away. But in reality, if you look yeah. at the doomsday clock and the, the situation right now, it's actually much closer to nuclear Armageddon than he was in the 80s. Yeah, but we had yeah, it in our yeah. culture. People nowadays just don't talk about it. No. Yeah. 
I we are always on a cliff edge, aren't we? Even though it doesn't feel like it, it's always a cliff edge. Moving closer and closer. Yeah, and, mm. and the more people I have, then the scarier it gets because somebody's going to make, like I say, somebody's a leader will make a bad decision. You'll have a glitch in the thing, or the, or the, or, or uh, you know, the crews will make a mistake, and it's just, it's too risky, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. It don't bear thinking about it, really, does it? I mean, just no, I mean, what can we do? What can anyone do about it? It's out of our hands. I don't know. I like for all of them to go away myself, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> no, no one does. Right. Um, I'm going to play a quick video of your bike history, which I've edited today. I've got so many pictures because you've had so many bikes. It's really difficult to uh, segregate all of this, but I'm just going to play your bike history now. All right. Where do we start with yeah. that? <laughs> Amazing. That's what a brilliant. bike history that is. Brilliant. Some um, nudging ones in there, weren't there? Yeah, brilliant, mate. Absolutely amazing. Uh, where do we start? I mean, I, I want to talk about every single bike that you had there. Some um, awesome oh, bikes in there. Jesus. Oh, brilliant. I'd love to ask a question. I'd love to ask right. a question. So a when question, you're on I'll salt flats, you <laughs> so, so when you're on the salt flats, Yes. Right now, now I don't ride off road at all. I mean, a gravel car park just strikes fear into me. But when you're on the salt flats, what is it like trying to put the power down on that surface? Does it feel like like a solid ground, or is it like sand? Or I feel it varies. It varies every time you go out there, and it varies from day to day and from morning to afternoon. Uh, sometimes it can be like as hard as hard packed sand or or hard packed snow. Sometimes it's like a slushy. You know, uh, I don't know if you have that drink, but it's like a slushy just, it just yeah, we have that. wet sand. It's just all over the place. So sometimes you can leave black marks down the salt. Then other times it's just you're just sliding all over the place. Yeah, that, that last clip, it was all over the place, wasn't it? Yeah. No, no I have grit. actually got the full one of that. Shall I play that? I'm going to play that. Yeah, now, right? please. Wow. 
that one was that was my my that was back in uh, 2013 we went out and my buddy was sick and he had that zx 1400 and he was sick so we we were we ride each other's bikes you know and he was sick so i rode it and i've been riding my little thruxton 900 900 with you know like 60 horsepower so i got on it and i go well i want to see what i can do with this so i gave it the gas I gave it everything and it started going all the way like this back and forth. And I was just sitting on top of it. I said, well, I'm not going to let off. I'm just going to see what's going to happen. <laughs> and we did pretty good. We got it, uh, you know, we got about 180 in the, in the three mile. Um, yeah. wow. So it, it was a lot of fun, but it wasn't my scariest ride by far. And what bike was that? Did you say it was? It was, a Z, it was a ZX 1400. It was a 2012. Oh, yeah. It was one of the, that's, that's the low horsepower version. Right. Is that is that what we call the Desert R? Yes. Yeah. Desert R fourteen hundred. Then I yeah. then I took it. It's what it's what rhythmic it got has got now. Mm-hmm. I've got I the picture. It. I'm just flicking through down the list. There's so many. Well, there was a twenty thirteen that my buddy and I kind of went in partners on. And uh he was gonna ride it at the salt and I was gonna be the co rider. That one right there. Mm-hmm. Now I want you to pause on this picture. Look at the stupid guy with the the camera on the side of his helmet. <laughs> I figured it out. That was a bad idea when I got to about 170 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Were you looking right quite a lot after that? <laughs> <laughs> but that one, that one was, I had, I did a bunch of runs. I got probably about five or six in the mid one nineties. We were trying everything to get a uh, 200 miles an hour, you know, and, and we would change the windscreens went from, you know, my my crew chief says you need a smaller wind uh windscreen on there and i said hey man i can't get a smaller windscreen it's like a, it's like ripping my head off right now and i can't mm-hmm. see at all and most of the time when you're out there if you want to know what it's like go about 100 miles an hour with your eyes closed for two or three seconds at a time and that's what it's kind of like uh, because wow. you don't you don't really look you you just pick your head up about every five or six seconds just to see if you're on a track <laughs> and how much was that bike actually tuned for that type of thing? Or was it oh, just that straight was off the road? Two, that was a 201 horsepower to rear wheel bike. Uh, right. It had the ECU uh, scramble there so we could do that. And uh, But we ran, I think I bet did the best. It was 196.7. And we tried everything. You know, we taped up everything. I put lighter leathers on, you know. I, 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 in fact, I got in trouble one time because I kept my head down too long. And as I was coming up to one of the uh, the markers on the side where they had the timing, I was coming right at it, and I was <laughs> and I looked up and I saw it, and it was either go left or go right. So I I chose left, and you can't do anything fast out there because everything's really slick. You can't use brakes. You can't set up. You can't you can't do anything fast. It's, everything's slow. So I slowly made a turn, and if you watch the video. You can hear the sound. I never did let off the gas, and I missed it. Mm, I missed it. <laughs> Not a lot. So when so, you're so heading when, towards 190 miles an hour, did it ever go through your mind that you got your lighter leathers on? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I would have filled the leathers up if it was me. <laughs> no, I, I've had it. I've had when I've ridden out there before, where you go and you think you slowed down because you did slow down from 190. But you're still going 90. And I've like lifted that face shield up, had yeah. that ripped off. Really? So, yeah, it's it, it is so cool to ride out there. It's 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 like when you get up to about a hundred miles an hour, it, uh, a little over hundred, maybe the first mile, you click into sixth gear, and that is the everything disappears. You know, it just feels like you're taking off into a cloud. It's it's the it's it's an experience that you just have to try. Because yeah. sounds like your video this morning, there. saddlebags. Huh? Sounds like saddlebags video this morning on the, uh, <laughs> the classic. <laughs> I haven't found the salt flats of Cornwall yet. <laughs> you got plenty of gates. Bro. You got plenty of gates. But it, it, it's, it's a good thing to run out there. Just everything kind of disappears. Everything is white. You know, just nothing out there. Not even bugs. Not even bugs. No. So how, no. how much have you done of that then? 
Is that something that you've done in more recent years or have you always done yeah, it? Yeah, I've done it in 2011, 13, 16, 17, 19, 21, and I'm going back this year. So, oh, yeah. This and where's it to? Huh? Where, how far away? How far away from Idaho is it? Or is it in Idaho? No, uh, it's it's in uh, it's in it's on the Utah and Nevada uh, border, but uh, it's about three hundred miles. It's not that far. Yeah. But this will be uh, my seventh time, and it'll be probably my last time. I've said that the last six times. So. so yeah. They do three hundred miles over there to go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's. It is massive. I, I've actually got a map here somewhere of of, uh, of America and where he where he sort of lives. So, but um, but I yeah, am also, for the for the next for the next time they are bringing the. Uh, I'm not. It's not my bike. This next time I'm riding somebody else's. So they're going to bring it down from Seattle and let me see if they can fit it to me uh, later this month. That's the rocket, is it? Yeah, it's a rocket three. And there's no wow. place to hide on those things. There's no place. And that's the tough thing because you can't, your elbows go out a little bit. You lose five or six miles an hour. You pop your head up. You lose five or six miles an hour. And and, and as, as light as I am, once you get up about 170, it tries to blow you off. You know, you just, yeah. you're like hanging on like a rag out a window or something. <laughs> Must be so exciting though. To it do is. Those it's speeds. great. It's a, it's a, so, I, I, what has been your scariest moment? You said that the salt flats weren't. What has been your scariest moment on a bike? Scariest moment on a bike. Mm. Popping a wheelie know. on the start of a drag strip. No, well, you know, the drag strip, if you watch the drag strip stuff, you can see that I do post a lot of the stuff that I do wrong too. <laughs> so, you know, popping a wheelies and going sideways. But, you know, I don't think any of that stuff has ever really scared me i wasn't scared when i almost hit the thing i was close i told the guys i said i miss it about this much they go, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah but, i've got the um the drag strip one where you're doing the pogo <laughs> you give me a moment and some uh, of my I'll best riding there I, I, <laughs> that's exactly what would have happened to me i can't <laughs> it. right this is the this is the one i think <laughs> yeah See if I can get it a little closer, on a little deeper in here. It's hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. That, 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 sorry, sorry. I must object. That was not a new performance, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have done much worse. No. You know, I, I was racing that ZX1400R, which has got 201 horsepower. I had no right. The first race, I almost beat him. I thought I beat him. In the second race, he beat me pretty good. In the third race, I said, well, I'll just, I'll throw everything at it, you know? I'll try everything. <laughs> was that was that, was that second gear? Huh? Was that second gear? Was the second gear? Or, or, or did you launch it in first gear or second? I'm launch, I'm launching in first gear because. Oh okay. With, someone said just. <laughs> the I uh, need I need some tips, uh, Flat Cat, because uh, Isha Rides has been inviting me to go to a drag strip for some time now, together with Uncle Red, uh, and I've never done it. She's done it before. On a one two five, 
uh, in an, on a 400 that I need I need some tips. I might do it best way to launch a bike, flat cap. I've got I've got a, I've got some videos out there. If you if you never did drag racing, how to how to do drag racing. Uh, I get a big kick out because I I go out and drag race, and I usually park right next to the concession stand because it's right next to the bathroom, which right next to the tech inspection. So I park here, and I get to race against the young guys, right? And uh, you know the young guys don't know who you are because you're dressed in leathers and blah blah blah. Well, they're riding a sport bikes, six hundreds with 130 horsepower, and I when I beat them. They, they, you know, it's really kind of bad because they know I got a slower motorcycle. But what really makes it bad is when they're walking by past the, the pits again, and and they go to the concession stand. They're walking with their buddies, and they see they got beat by a senior citizen on an old. Bike. <laughs> <laughs> and the guys get, they, 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 you can see them punching at him, going, "You got beat by him." <laughs> That's brilliant. brilliant. Uh, yeah. That is a lot. It's a lot of fun. You'll enjoy it. Uh, we took a, a friend of mine out. He's 80 years old and he usually goes to bed like at eight o'clock at night. So he went out there with us and he did some drag racing and he didn't go to bed till like 1130 at night. He was so jazzed up. But he bet. did pretty good. He did pretty yeah. good. It's, it's a good way to learn how to um, control a bike, isn't it? You know, and, and uh, you know, con control a bike at speed in a safe place. Well, the thing that that, that noob here is going to be he's going to see that the launching those standard wheelbase bikes is very very hard you know because they they like they like to come up so you, one thing you don't want to do is get in a car track because they're really really sticky so that makes you want to pop the wheel even worse and uh that's what i was on that that one that did the pogo i said i decided i want more traction so went, went over a little bit on the strip and I got traction. I got too much. Or just take the Himalayan and you won't wheelie. <laughs> yeah. I, I threatened to run the uh, roll in, my roll in field 500 out there, saddlebags, against the Rocket 3 because he couldn't beat anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, good sport. How come you got the sidecar then? Was it an MZ you had with the sidecar? Yeah, was that it? Was What's nice it all about? I, you know, like I said, I, I went to Russia and uh, and I saw the Urals over there and things like that. And uh, I never did know about Urals or sidecars up until that point. So we got back and I went down to the BMW dealer and he had this little 500 CC Rotax engine with a called is MZs. And I bought that and I had a lot of fun with that, but you've got to be strong on the upper body for on those sidecars. And I wasn't so. Yeah. So you had enough of it in the end. Oh yeah, but it was. I, I sold it for probably what I paid for it after four or five years. You know, I, I kept it for a while. I rode yeah. my mother-in-law in it and father-in-law in it. You All know, right. you, you put a big heavy guy in a sidecar. You know, and they're leaning. I have my father-in-law going down this mountain, leaning out, hanging out on the side. My father-in-law was hanging out, trying to, you know, <laughs> help me out a little bit. <laughs> One of my favorite bikes of yours, actually, is this one here, the Thunderbird. Uh huh. I love that bike. So, so good looking, that bike. It yeah, is. One of them. I had problems with it. And I'll tell you the problems I had with it is it, it was, I would lean it over so far that with the frame would touch and lift the rear wheel off. Oh, it's terrifying. That's, you know, then that, of course, that's on me, but it, I, I do it so often that, I, you know, it's, it, it'd move over a foot or something like that. But it was a good bike. I never could get used to that forward footing feet position, though. I don't know about you guys. It's it's always strange for me. Yeah, I don't like it myself much. But um, Saddle and Phil, you've got bikes which have forward pegs. Is, does he also have forward pegs, Phil? No, no, mine's got mid mid pegs. Yeah, the yeah. mid peg is good. In fact, I put a pair put a pair of mid pegs on that Thunderbird, but still, yet yeah, I can still grind it. You know. I was misbehaving. Yeah. If you haven't figured it out now, I was a little bit. Of, I'm still a little bit of a stinker. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. Good way to be. That's all right. And uh, how did you end up with that then? I always wanted Royal Enfield. I've been watching Royal Enfields for a long time, and it, and everybody was saying, "Oh, they got this bad reputation. This the bad reputation that." And I was wanting one for about ten years. I'd went over. I'd 
we went over about 400 miles so I could do a test ride and the bike was actually screws are falling out of it. And I go, ah, this is probably not, I'm not, I'm probably not going to get a rural infield, but I waited another couple of years and about 2016 and Saddlebacks probably knows more of this than I do, but around 2016 and 2017, the quality started improving a little bit. And uh, so I went ahead. It's a lovely bike. It's, it's one of the prettiest bikes I've ever owned. And it's, it's so much fun to polish. You know, you know, you can ride 50 miles an hour. It's great. It's got ergonomics are great on it. And the only thing I haven't figured out is how to keep a headlight in mine. I, I'm on my like six headlight. All right. But they're only 17 bucks a piece. So that's not, you know, it's not like my BMW. It's like 350. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, a light bulb. <laughs> and you-, you had a BMW, which is one of my favorites, actually, R90. Uh, what happened there? I do know the story, but I'll let you tell everybody else. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I got kind of, I got, I used to sell motorcycles at the, I was a sales manager at the BMW shop and, and I, and it had Triumphs. And so I ended up buying a Triumph because I liked it a little bit better. And I got scared away from BMWs over a period of time because some of the BMW guys were kind of arrogant when they come in, you know, they were throwing around money and bragging about their private schools. And I kind of associated the, those kind of folks with the motorcycles, which is a mistake. There's nothing wrong with the motorcycles. Some of the people that own them aren't, aren't, weren't the best, but yeah. it took me a long time, but I saw this Lupine blue, uh, R90 and it was so, it was just, to me, it was beautiful. Oh, and, they are beautiful bikes. I and love those I, bikes. I bought it and, uh, and I took it, one of those clips you showed out there is at the drag strip against uh, Mr. Bill and his Grizzo. And uh, what I found out was that thing's quick. I mean, I was running 11 sevens and 11 eights with that motorcycle at 120 miles an hour and a quarter mile, right. completely stock mufflers, everything, you know? And yeah. I was, I was, it is so easy to ride. I mean, and it sounds pretty good. This stock, it sounds good. Yeah. And I was really upset to lose that bike because I, I, I really, really did like that bike. Yeah. Is that one that they stole? Yep. Yeah, they stole that one oh, and the it? Tiger at the same time. I, I got a twofer, you know, lucky me. Oh, <laughs> terrible. But, you know, the, the first bike I sold, ER, was my interest. You, I sold a bike that looks just like your 850R as a sales, as a salesman. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and I and I thought it came with it. I you know the the person that bought it. I thought, well, yeah, it comes with all this stuff. And it turned out they wanted a tack, and I thought it came with a bike, and it didn't. Right. So oh, right. on my very first sale, I lost like three hundred dollars because I had to pay for the the tack. <laughs> right. Sorry, the tack. What what's that? It's a tachometer. It didn't come. Oh with oh got you. right. It didn't yeah, come yeah. with a tachometer. You had a. It was a, that was kind of a. And I told him it did, so I wasn't gonna go back. I wasn't gonna go back and tell him, you know, you asked the question, I gave you the answer, and now I gave you the price. So once I give you the price, any mistakes, it's on me now. So yeah, oh, what a shame. Yeah, never mind. Live and learn. Live and learn. That's oh, that's a great about. bike though. I, I liked it. You don't run with the windscreen on it no more. Why, why did you take the windscreen off? Um, it just doesn't look very good. Yeah, so I take it off, and I, I normally put it on in the summer, so it catch the flies, but. <clears throat> So you and Saddlebags haven't switched bikes lately, have you? No, no. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> no, I, don't know why. <laughs> I can't imagine why. <laughs> oh, it's awful. Yeah, that was a one one of those awful times. But never mind. <laughs> He's okay, still here anyway. Sorry. Still friends. <laughs> the, the bad subject. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, no, I, I as you know, I, I'm I'm a BMW fan. I think they're fantastic bikes. But you've only had one. No, you've had two, haven't you? I had a K seventy five S, and I bought I bought that, Adam. You know, you're talking about heart versus mind. You know, in your latest video, and I bought that once, and I got the ugly old uh, lambskin on there. But uh, I bought that <laughs> one from the window. I, you know, it was, it was in the window, and yep. I ended up buying that just looking at it and there are they still boxer engines or are they no it was a three-cylinder horizontal three oh know? okay um and it's very very smooth and you know it was very pleasant and uh it was dull 
I did, it was just dull. Right. <laughs> and I, you know, I kept it for two or three years and I, you know, I'd, I'd actually rather ride a, my Sportster 883 on a 500 mile ride than I'd ride that one. To tell right. you, in, if anybody's ridden an 883, you know how much they vibrate. Yeah. But Phil, is that what you've got, Phil, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. See, yours is rubber mount, though, right? Is your is your Pardon, engine, what was that? is your engine rubber mounted? Does it have rubber mounts? Yes, it is. Yeah, I've got the rubber mounted version. Yeah, see, mine didn't have the rubber mounts, and then it had the chain, <laughs> which made it really wow. bad. And you know, you get going ninety miles an hour, which I did all the time. It's about it go about a hundred. You go about ninety, the gas cap would start unscrewing. <laughs> the blinkers would turn around, you know, <laughs> and the battery would die about every six months because of the vibration. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> so what bikes do you actually own now? Sorry, you carry on and finish that. But yeah. let me finish this story. I we used to arrive with a guy with a VMAX, you know, those uh 1985 VMAXs. Yeah. And when it first came out with the bamboozle horns, you know, on the side mm -hmm. of them. That's what I call them bamboozle horns. But the VMAX, it was re really a quick bike, right? It's like a sub eleven second quarter mile bike. And I had a buddy that used to ride with us and He'd stop and he thought I was the best rider in the world because we do roll ons and I'd beat him with my Sportster 883. Oh. Well, he did, what he didn't figure out was I was pulling the spark plug wires off of tubies. We'd stop and park. I pulled two spark plug wires off and <laughs> we did the roll on. I beat him barely. <laughs> and he couldn't figure that out. And it went on for about a year before one of the other guys told him that I was pulling the spark plug wires off. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> So what bikes have you got rid of over the years that you wish that you kept apart from all of them? We all want to keep our bikes, but um, has, the, has there been any, been any real heartbreakers? I had a Kawasaki uh, S2A 1973. It's blue. as that, that number one bike you had there. That Actually, uh, okay. I had it longer than Adam has been alive. I've had it 42 years. Yeah, that's right. Wow. And uh, I wrecked that thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I told you a little bit about my, my road racing history. I wasn't any good at all, but I, I, you know, I just didn't have any fear. Now that's the A7. I hit the truck, the big truck with that one. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, the, the, but the number one bike is the, it was a blue one. And I, and I used to road race it in the crash. And I thought I was, I, I'd get mad. We, we'd be out there, you know, do push starts, you know, and I can always do good push starts, but I couldn't make the turns, you know, yeah. I just couldn't make the turns. So I'd run off the turns this way. I'd run off the turns that way. I'd always run off the turns during the race at least once or twice. And one day I was racing against a guy. He was an old guy. He's 28 years old. That's what I thought was old. <laughs> so and he had this really nice Yamaha, you know, RD 350 and, and, uh, and he had leathers, you know, I had textile stuff on, you know, fake stuff. And, uh, and I was, I passed him like three or four times. And I came up to him at the end of the race. I said, I, and this is how arrogant I was. I said, man, I said, with all that stuff here, I passed you three or four times. Of course, he said, yeah, but I finished ahead of you because I run off the track, you know. Uh, I might have passed him three times, but I needed to pass him four, right? And I just kind of turned around and kind of learned my lesson then, you know. I was mean mouthing him, but he was actually, he did a lot better than I did yeah yeah what was the other harley that was in the list was it an xr no i had a uh i had a, a little 250 uh harley davidson uh, uh it's like a that one right there ss 250. i had that when i was in germany and uh and uh, i i changed the bars i put some z bars on it a little bit later and i changed the gearing a little bit so i could run out on the autobahn but i used to take that one out i'd go out in the taunus mountains and uh, i'd I could I'd race try to race the Porsches, but I'd only race them downhill because yeah. I couldn't go fast. <laughs> I couldn't and didn't have enough power to do. But that's in the motor that, pool. That the one they used the MZ engine in it. No, that had a um who made that? It's Armichi made the motors, I think. This it's a two-stroke uh with a chrome board. And that was during the AMF time. So those those weren't very good built bikes no. at that time but that one was pretty good I, right there where i where that picture is 
I used to race up and down that motor pool, you know, kind of treat it like a quarter mile. And uh, I got my driver's license taken away a couple times for that. <laughs> Army did not appreciate me drag racing there. Uh, oh, great. It's, it's amazing what you've done. I think what we'll do is I've, I've got the Thruxton uh, on the soap flats here somewhere. Oh, somebody, oh, it's new spot, uh, Mike, that's all right. Um, so I'm just going to play that one a minute. not bad for thruxton r not bad at all i saw you talking away there but you, we can't hear you when the video's playing what, what i'm so. saying i'm talking to myself i'm saying go baby don't we <laughs> you know you know that what happens at the two mile point is there's mountains to your right and they 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 run along and there's i actually they're dikes they're dikes to the to the right and once you clear the two mile point the dikes stop so the wind can right. hit you so oh yeah part of the racing is knowing Hey, the wind's going to hit you and it's going to move you. And I've been moved as much as like five feet, you know, while wow. I've been out there. It is, and sometimes if you run close to the sides and the wind's kind of blowing you, it'll blow you into the flags. And I've seen that happen. Guys yeah. get blown into the flags. Yeah. It's not, it's not like Isle of Man TT bad, but it's, there's probably three or four, you know, people falling off a day out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, um, you know, fat fatalities, I, I hope, is there? Uh, yeah, there's, there, yeah, there, there is. Uh, there's probably, no, I wouldn't say it averages one a year. It's, it's less than one a year. Uh, yeah. What they do is they, 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 they'll uh, uh, fly them into Salt Lake City for the, you know, they take them off by ambulance then they take them into Salt Lake City. But a lot That's of motorcycle cool. guys get hurt out there. It's, yeah. it's, it's you're 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 fine you got to sit on the bike and kind of let it move around for you you know and still give it the gas you can't be you can't let off the gas you gotta no. give, gotta give the yeah gas. you gotta have balls of steel that's what you're trying to say there yeah or stupid <laughs> like maybe. yeah 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 <laughs> the latter then for me <laughs> have you got any more uh, events good. on your bucket list i couldn't hear you have you got any more events on your bucket list, like Pikes Peak or anything like that? Oh, yeah, I want to do uh, – there's a lot of stuff I want to do. I'm just getting too old to do them, Phil. Uh, I still want to take a couple tours. I want to tour up to Alaska. I want to tour in Italy. And I'd like to come over and see you guys. That would be good. That would be great. That would be good. Yeah. Uh, I want to do the – I want to do a Yamaha Road Racing School. I'll join you for a tour of Italy. All right. I want to do. Uh, I want to do. I want to break the nine second in a quarter mile. I want to set a land speed record. I'm gonna to try to do that this year. That's on yeah. the rocket. You want to do that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's. You know, he's got a rocket that's. I saw the dyno on. It's. It's almost 260 horsepower, and it's. It'll pull wow. that grand. So, I don't know. Maybe it'll do it. I. Li I'd like to learn how to do trials riding. You know. Yeah. That always interests me. I, those what they can do with a trials bike. It was like, it's it is amazing. That, yeah, it's like I mean, magicians, you know. Well, you've you've had a trials bike. Why is the history that you one one of your bikes was a trials bike? No, I had a motocross bike, and like I said, I they they didn't really like me. I I did. I watched the motocross. You know, you you're young. You go out there and you watch, and the, the guys are going so slow. They're not doing jumps. They're not. You know. So I can do better than that. So I bought a little bike that went out there to do that. And I got that little Kawasaki trail boss. And I went out and I was 
got out there and there's like 30 of us going across, you know, and uh, that was a real good start. So I took off and I run over a couple in the first turn. Then I did in a couple of the heats. I run over two or three more, you know, guys. Yeah. I didn't even know I was supposed to. I didn't even use the front brake. I, I didn't Is that know. the one? It. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. This, that looks a fun little bike, bike that. that one, just like it. That's what I want. Nice little bike like that. Little but, Suzuki van van. But when I get when I got through new when I got through with the the thing and went to get my trophies, they told me not to come back. <laughs> I was I was a little mental for them, so and it, to be fair, I was. So Yeah. Wouldn't have you any other way though. Huh? Um, <laughs> if you your son rides as well, doesn't he? Does he no. ride a bike? Mm. Oh. He rode with me till he's about eight or nine years old. Then uh he liked to honk the horn and give the gas. Yeah. yeah. And uh, once he got big enough to ride on the back, he just, he, he does, he's not in his interest. And in I've never pushed him for it, you know. No. Uh, my nephews no. ride, you know, I, right. I ride with my nephews. Yeah. yeah. I'd encourage anyone to um, go over to your channel and, and watch your bike history because it's it's a brilliant video. It really is excellent. And some of your rides that you do as well through the mountains, yeah, the Tiger 1200 and all that are absolutely But I don't have I don't have those hedgerows, I don't have the seas you got, you know, I don't have the mountain views as well. No. You guys mm. have the ocean views and yeah. You've got them you've got, got like the mountain it. views. Yeah, you got the mountain views. Yeah, I got these like these ones in the background. Yeah. We are lucky here. I mean, the, the coast is not very far away, you know, probably 10 miles away from me. So, but for you, it's probably about 400, isn't it? From Idaho? Oh, it's probably uh, more. 600 or more. Is it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good ways. Yeah. Well, we try where, to get where out. Would be, where, where would it be? You'd be going to Oregon, Washington State, California? Uh, yeah. We go. I, I, my wife and I have rode down the coast before and through the redwoods. I don't know where you're going, Adam. When you come over, are you going to go? Yeah, these guys don't know about this, I don't think. <clears throat> but we do now. We do now. <laughs> Got some <laughs> back now. Oh, sorry about that, man. That's all right. I, I, yeah, for my 40th, which is in two years, one week, I like to go on a massive road trip. So what? Plan, oh. I plan on going down to me, flat cap. He kindly said, here, let me a bike, which is uh, perfect. You I was going to go and think Ed March, but I think after talking to Flat Cap a bit more, I might just stay with with you. <laughs> <laughs> if you decide to, if you if you're going to bring your your wife coming with you, no, just me. Okay, so you can pretty much ride any bike that you got. Then probably the most comfortable bike I, and for touring is the the Tiger, though. You can load everything on it and get 50 miles to a gallon, and you know you're going to run into the heat, you're going to run into cold, so. So what bikes bike. do you actually own now then? You got the Tiger 900. What I get else? the Thruxton R. I got Sorry, a Moto Guzzi yeah. Breva. And I have a Royal Enfield Classic 500, which isn't named Ernie. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what is it named? Have you got I names for it? it? I haven't no. named it. I, 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 I thought I once I was going to call it Blinky because of the headlight kept going out. <laughs> <laughs> But I thought that was kind of, you know, maybe not appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> is that the, that's your Moto Guzzi here, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I put a windscreen on it. I love that it. bike. Pardon me? I love that bike. It looks awesome. That is just, not useful. I just put a windscreen on the top of it, you know, and uh, put some heated hand grips. Oxford, you know, same kind you got on yours, uh, saddlebags. And then I put... What else? I just put some road sixes on there. I had a flat tire last time I went out. Yeah. So I yeah. put some a Michelin road sixes. In. I haven't even test ridden it with them on yet. The and would you bad. say that they ride a little bit like the BMWs due to the engine con configuration? The, the rocking or... back and forth is very similar. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that BMW, the R9T is the, uh, a lot quicker. And a little is bit it? Better handling by. Yeah. They are yeah. rapid, aren't they? Pardon me? They are very rapid, the well, R90s. The R90s are. I'd, I'd like to have, they get an anniversary edition coming out. That's one of the bikes I'd like to have, the 100-year anniversary of the R90. That's, yeah. that's a big bike. Quite underrated, I think. 
Yeah. yeah. Mine too. And that Moto Guzzi is a very comfortable bike, but it's 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 540 pounds, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a lump. Yeah. You if you ever watch him push it out of the garage, you can see how I have to I have to take a break after I do that. <laughs> yeah. If you if you, if you, uh, if you thought about the V100, did you want the liquid cooled? I did. You know, but do, do you guys, let me ask you a question. Do you guys like, I have a problem with the exhaust pipe coming out of the side there. You know, this doesn't look right to me for some reason. And I'm, yeah, because well, they, they turned the heads, right? So the exhaust, yeah. instead of coming forward, it comes straight, straight outside. My what worry with that is if it, if it falls over, it's going to damage yeah. the pipe. The, yeah, it's going to crush the pipe unless you get a, you know, I guess you get crash bars or something, but I do like the way it looks. Uh, I like the little air things with the wings on it. I know it's a kind of a gimmick thing. Yeah, but I do like that. Yeah. And it looks beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful looking bike. Well, but I mean, uh, we've had a few people do test rides and do videos on them and said that that actually does work. It, it gets some of the wind off of your hips and, and, and legs. I, yeah, I think I'm, I was Lamb Chops and Hippo rode one, didn't I? I think. Yeah, I've, I've, got, a, I've got a test ride on, on one. Uh, in a couple of weeks. So, mm. You put lamb chop on a bike, though, it makes everything look like a little mini bike, you know? He does. He gets on it, and this looks so small. Yeah. yeah. He's a good rider. Oh, he there is. you go. Yeah, that's it, Phil. That's the one. I tried to, uh, try to get I tried to get lamb chop to come over and ride his, uh, to, to break his bike over, his um, Kawasaki over, and do land speed racing with it, but I don't think he's... What, the H2? Yeah, that H2. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I saw the uh, Kawasaki had a team, what they call Team 38 out there with a, uh, with the ZX, uh, the, the new one, you know, the supercharged one, the street model. It was a production bike. It had like license plate halter and everything. And of course, you know, I was expecting all the, I was, I was expecting a rider to be about my size, you know. The crew was all about my size, but the rider, he was like six foot two. He's, he's yeah. the biggest Japanese guys I ever saw in my life. You know? <laughs> he, kept riding the bike. And he went 200 and something miles an hour on a, a stock production bike. Yeah. You know, he did amazing. great with it. And so, how come you started the YouTube thing then? What pulled you into that? Was it, it, it like a diary for you? Yeah, it was uh, I, with my other channel, Just Dad. I started that and I did it with the, um, the some of the videos. Some of my relatives could watch some of how stupid I was because everybody was always telling me to quit riding motorcycles. Since I've been 16, I don't right. know if any of that's happened to you guys. Your mom's always telling you, ah, you got to quit that. And um, so I, I did that and I did the flat cap channel and it's, it's still going, but you know, this never did take off. So I started this channel about two years ago and uh, it's doing better. But you know, I'm uh, noobs encouraging me to continue, but I think I'm about. I think in June, I think I'm going to let it go into the sunset. Oh, oh yeah. really? You don't enjoy it? I, it's not that I enjoy it, but I don't think, you know, I, I knew you maybe answered this and you're maybe a little closer to me and views and mm -hmm. everything. What, what really aggravates the crap out of me, hope you don't mind me saying that, but it aggravates yeah. me that I get two subscribers and I lose one. I get yeah new subscribers i'll lose one and if you got a lot of subscribers you maybe not, not notice that but if you've got 30 a month you notice that and you never know why nobody says yeah no but that's 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 just that's just the reality of it right um from my point of view uh if you focused on the number of subscribers you're going to struggle uh so i've always said to myself i'm going to focus on doing what i have fun doing and if Absolutely. they subscribe, good. If they don't, if they unsubscribe, their mm -hmm. loss. Uh, I'm not going to bother about. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Obviously, you know, it, it's a fallacy. You you do look at it and you says, "Oh, I wish you know, I wish I got to a thousand. But if I don't get to a thousand, so what? I'm still going to ride my motorcycles. I'm still going to film it. I'm still going to make the uh -huh. videos. I don't give a crap." Sorry, Greg. Well, that's, a, that's a that's a great attitude to have, but I unfortunately I, I don't have that one. I, I set a goal for myself when I started this. I said I'm gonna in in two years if I can get a thousand subscribers, then I'll continue. And uh, Bandit Man said, "Don't quit," but 
His wife said, if I come over, they have some mushy peas. I didn't understand. I don't understand mushy peas. <laughs> I saw that for me. Oh, you, you've got to try them. You've got to try them. There's no explaining them. You just have to, you just have to try them. Yeah. It's, it's they were out the day. It sounds. It's they really were. not. They, they're not bad. Oh, I don't I, 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 before I tried them, I thought they were going to be disgusting, but they're actually quite nice. No, they are disgusting. That's why my scone with cream and then jam. Yeah. <laughs> it's the height of british cuisine flat cap come on I, i'll try it but i'll try it with a beer i have to try it with a beer if i come over and i try it i try it with a beer it, it will work with, with a beer you will okay, be okay with it, it, it won't beer. it won't work mushy yeah. peas won't work <laughs> I, can't, I can't drink hard stuff noob i i tried that when i was in uh when i went on to russia i was a part of the star treaty we we went over to uh to do the um uh, witness the destruction this is only beer it's only 4.3 percent you're fine that's what they told me when i was over there so we we, we went up to breakfast with a we had big table with the russians around it and americans around it and starting off the day it's nine o'clock breakfast they were drinking vodka and cognac <laughs> as soon as you empty a glass they'd fill it back up by by 10 o'clock i didn't need a jacket it was so i was so warm you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> They, they took us out on the to get you in the hotel room to make a PP tape from you. Here's here's the one they got on me. I'll tell you this one. So the last night we went out on the uh, they take us out on the paddle boat and the uh, on the Volga River right next to the Russian White House. And they had a little high school marching band there playing, and we were drinking shots of vodka and drink, eating watermelon. It's as bad as it sounds. That's we, we, funny we, mix. We drank, so we drank and they they took us off the boat and they bust us out to the forest and i thought well this is not a good idea you know these guys still are not our friends but they had a great big layout the table was like 20 or 30 feet long they had it like a two pigs with apples stuck in their mouth you know on it <laughs> and we start drinking out there and the high school kids start drinking vodka and they were really getting sloppy drunk and and we get got back and i was i was pretty i was really toasted and because uh, they start dancing you know how the russians do their little dances well after you drink a lot of vodka that 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 can go a bad way <laughs> yeah. so we got back to the room and we we're supposed to leave the next day I, I never did i never didn't make it to the bed i packed my suitcase no no i packed my suitcase from laying down on the floor i was laying down on the floor and packing my suitcase i couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> Blottoed. I've ne yeah. I never had vodka since. But <laughs> I would I'll tell you one thing. <clears throat> I did find something interesting about vodka is I didn't understand Russian and, and the Russians didn't understand me. Um, yeah. But after drinking vodka all night long, we could talk. It's an icebreaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 when you get to the point where you're talking drunk in Russian and in English, it's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you who you... Um, you put me on to actually another channel uh flat cap i think it was on your your 10 favorite channels or something like that uh technical technical ability channels and yeah. that was mike spike edwards yeah he's a fantastic channel isn't he i've been watching a few of his recently oh, yeah. and he's a he does a lot of track days and he explains everything and why he's doing it have you yeah. guys seen mike spike edwards yeah yeah from flat caps um, video I'll yeah, I, I haven't, but I'll, I'll, I'll be on. I'll be checking oh, that yeah. out. He could ride one of those RD. Is he, is he the guy I watched come in from the back of the grid yep. to win mm -hmm. the race? Yeah. yeah. He, he, I was I was already in the comments section after he stalled it out the, at the top front row. I said, how could you do such a thing? <laughs> and I watched him. He passed. He caught up with every, They got 20 or 30 second head start on him. He caught and passed everybody. Yeah. It's like, that guy is yeah. spectacular. Yeah. He is. I, I really get into his videos because you can, what, as he goes into each corner, he, he tells you how he sets it up and why he's doing it, and he's setting up like you know two corners ahead of, of time. And yeah, I, I find it really interesting, you know, and, and exciting to watch that. He, yeah, sure. If, I, I said if I ever hit the lottery and I have the money to buy a, a, a road race course, you know, and build it, I'm having Spike Mike Edwards build it for me. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's he's really good. His wife is really she takes all the pictures for him, you know, and uh, he rides the BMWs. He rides a Yamaha. He rides the old school stuff, you know, 
and yeah. uh, he he does he does well in all of it. And he's yeah. he's sixty something years old, and man, he's a rider. Yeah, yeah. It must cost a fortune though on tires and track days, and it's not a cheap hobby, is it? No, but I think he gets sponsorship. Oh, does he? Yeah, I, I think he does. He has okay. to because he's just too good. Yeah, none of us are good enough to get sponsored. Yeah. Hippodrome's not bad. I saw him do some uh, racing out there. Yeah, he's a good rider. I get he yeah. tickles me. He starts getting really excited. He goes, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." yeah. <laughs> good evening, ladies and gents. Yeah, <laughs> that's my impression. <laughs> that was good. That's pretty good. That was that's pretty, pretty good. good was that TMF. <laughs> <Yeah>. No. <laughs> Hello, kids. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I did. I did invite TMF was coming over. Uh, he was going to ride. Um, I invited him to come over two or three years ago for the COVID. And he was going to be the second rider on my bike. Uh, my Thruxton. I was going to let him oh, ride yeah. Thruxton. And maybe we were going to take the ZX-14 and let him ride that. I thought as much stick as he gets from everybody, especially like Lamb Chops and you know Rick, yeah, Ricky V and all those guys. I thought well, he if he rode on Bonneville, at least he had something he could point to that says, yeah. You know, no one else has done that. I did this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but definitely. They, they do, he get, I think his fashion, his fashion sessions give him more stick than anything, you know. He gets out there when he models his tight, tight jeans and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I like him. I, I wish I could, you know, he talks like, I have to slow it down because he talks like 150, 60 words a minute. And um, I can understand him. Uh, have you guys ever watched Guy Martin? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love yes, Guy Martin. Yes. Lovely guy. Guy Martin was out at, uh, I saw Guy was out in 2016 out at Bonneville, and I talked to Guy. I could not understand him. That's a northern accent. I, so when I watch Guy Martin on the YouTube, I put the closed captions on. Mm. You know, so I can understand him, but mm. he was out there. But the look he was giving the Triumph guys, they they really did not help Guy Martin. He he did wonderful with that bike out there. He was a piece of crap. What's Guy Martin doing now? Is he still on the TV? Because I haven't seen him. Oh, yeah, he's on everything. He's, on, he's on everything. Uh. Yeah. He's a he's he's a great rider, man. When they put him into the streamliner, you ought to see him. He, he had. I almost had to get dressed when he got in because it was built for Jason DeSavo, who was about 5'4 and about 120 pounds. Well, Guy Martin's like 5'8 or 9 and 160 pounds. So they had to squeeze him in there, and he had to ride and drive that streamliner at over almost 300 miles an hour with one eye closed, you know. He's going yeah. like this, you know, because the, yeah. the optics of the screen wasn't set up for him. And... He did a great job with that. There was nobody yeah. else could have done better than Guy Martin. Yeah, yeah. he's one of those guys that it, it seemed really genuine, isn't he? Yeah, oh, genuine, nice person. He's nice to everybody yeah. out there, and he, he's a big fan of dogs. So he's a big animal lover. So oh, was he? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, lads, I, we could talk to this guy all night, couldn't we? But I've got to oh, wrap it up, unfortunately, yeah. because I've uh, this is going to be going out on a podcast at some point. Um, if you guys haven't tuned into the podcast then it's available on all uh podcast streams now including spotify google podcasts and uh and alike so um at some point i'll let you know uh jerry when that comes out all right on the podcast well, I, um, I thank you i appreciate the invite and thanks for being here guys and i'm glad to see noobs not stuck in the tube somewhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is this this is from uh, this is with my uh, my first big bike, a Ninja Six Fifty. Uh, I think this is uh, Snatterton. All right. <laughs> and Phil, I'm glad you're feeling better. Good to see a Thank smile you. on your yeah. face. Well, as yeah. soon as I got out on the bike, I felt better. Yeah. 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 That's I'm often the case, though, isn't it? When you when you're feeling a, a, on a bit of a downer, you get out on the bike, and then you feel much better, don't you? You come home, and you think, oh, that's what I needed. Yeah. We'll win there. Yeah. 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 I'm looking yeah. forward to part two of the Cornwall walks too, Saddlebags. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I'm working on that. I'm working okay. on that. Thanks. It looks pretty cool out there where you're doing it too. So, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's, it's nice. a nice part of the but, world, Cornwall. 
And Adam, when you get yeah. ready, when you get ready, let me know and what kind of bike you want to ride. I, you can ride any of them, but I'm going to have Michelins and all of them, though. Yeah. I have good tires on them for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll get in yeah. we de we're definitely going to need a part two with you on i think because yeah, there's think too much so. to talk about uh, yeah definitely <laughs> i'll tell you about the rz350 i had one of those uh, go on tell us about it now go for uh, it i'm no, going to get it, it up on screen i i bought you know i had i was a, a missile instructor at uh for grand launch cruise missile in tucson one of the students come by and he's he was going over to italy so he wanted me to no. sell his bike for him is RZ 350 and of course I knew I wasn't going to sell it. I was going to buy it so everybody would call to buy it I'd hang up on them you know no it's not for sale so I told my wife I said well she's watching this today so she'll know now I told her I said uh <laughs> I, I said hi Mrs. Black want, Cap. hello <laughs> nobody wants to buy it and uh so uh, I bought it myself and I took that road racing and it's, it's a great bike but it brings out the evil in me on the street, mm. you know, pop wheelies. Mm. Did it go around corners? So, oh yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot better than I could go around corners. I did really <laughs> well with that. I, 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 at forty years old, I figured out how to stop crashing. All right, I'm still learning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway. All right. <laughs> All right see you guys. Show. Right. Uh, much you need... for me. <laughs> the much you peace, yeah. <laughs> um right next live is on the 19th of march hopefully some of you guys can come along uh it's a scottish one a scottish edition with airship vlogster teapot one and lockwood 92 as long as they can uh, all make it so put that in your diary 19th of march 8 8 p.m um thanks to the comment commenters coming along bandit man uk uh blake lily lip gloss helmets and hem uh who else we got phil carry thanks for staying around mate phil green uh norfolk thunderbolt andy edwards gsa mike, yeah mike, mike edwards was there he's working yeah, yeah, he's out yeah, yeah. in the roads yeah yeah he's out in the road somewhere which is why uh i did actually ask him if he wanted to pop in on this cast but he's working so that was the end so, of that so, but somebody we'll... was asking if i have to be at work tomorrow uh, yes i'm gonna be at work tomorrow i don't and it's monday yeah, yeah, Monday is Monday. work day, unfortunately. Yeah, go yeah. do what you gotta do. Um, but again, get yourselves over to all of these guys' channels, uh, Saddlebag73, Western Super Motor Vlog, Epic Adam Motor Vlogs, and Noob Biker, and most importantly, our special guest, Flat Cap Racer. Uh, what a legend of a guy. He, he certainly yeah. lives up to his uh to his reputation, doesn't he? So no yeah, pressure sure. on that rocket at all, all right? But you make that's, sure you make a video on that. No, it's very important that we get him to a thousand so he doesn't quit YouTube. Yeah, please. absolutely. Yeah, please. Yes. Hey, yeah, I, it, it's okay. I, it's it's the no, goal. it's not okay. Shut up. It's yeah, not it's okay. Not. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> it's first time I've seen you get excited. You don't get excited yeah. in that London traffic. You get excited. <laughs> Believe me, don't you don't quit. get on this show for don't no reason, all right? Quit. If you get on this show, it means that you have got something to show on your YouTube Yeah, we, we need you as part of the community as much as anything else. Just yeah, around. and you've got an obligation now. Not you need a loss of uh, subscribers, XR. Usually when I go on, I you lose, people lose two or three. So Yeah. Well, a, a good friend of mine called, uh, well, actually, it was Saddlebag73, uh, said exactly the way I feel. And when he grows up, he wants to be flat cap racer. And I said, I'm exactly the same, Saddle. <laughs> All but right, anyway, I appreciate that. Oh, dude, uh, stay on, guys. All right, Jerry, stay on right there. Um, thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, been superstars, all the commenters and Bandit Man UK, okay. all the people that have been here, uh, all the way through. Everybody's saying good night now. Good night, everybody, and we'll see you on the 19th. Right, the Scottish Ciao edition. for now. Ciao for now. Cheers, Ciao guys.